Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Jody, and the channel is J.I. Colorist. Today I'm going to be doing uh, my first ever kind of color and chat. Um, so I'm hoping that this goes well. I live in the rural area of Alberta, Canada, so my internet does not support lives. So this kind of color and chat would be my kind of version of a live um, color and chat. So I hope that it goes well and if you like this type of video um, at the end of the video uh, give it a thumbs up and then I'll know to continue on in this kind of thing. So I'm working currently in Rita Berman's uh, microscope under or magnifying glass under the sea and um, I'm working on a buddy page actually a buddy color page and I'm working on a double page spread that I am uh, buddy coloring with uh, kaleidoscopic uh, Laura from the UK. So I'm going to be working on this page whilst I do my chatting and I've based the page already so I did not treat this uh, paper this time so I'm kind of testing out this paper without treating it with any kind of gesso or Daniel Smith watercolor ground. So this is just plain paper and I have already used some ink tents on it. I used sea blue, teal green and deep indigo on this um, both sides of the page and I'm just using a Kuretake uh, watercolor brush. It's my favorite watercolor brush. It is very small bristles and it allows me to uh, kind of control the amount of water on my page. So that's what I've done to the page already and now I'm coming in. I kind of wanted to deepen up the colors a little bit but um, I didn't want to keep using the ink tents. Um, I just felt like using crayon so I'm now bringing in some Neo Color 2 and currently I'm using the Prussian Blue and I've just kind of added it to the this area right here so far and I'm just deepening up the colors. So I have the um, 40 set I believe of the uh, Neo Color 2s. So these are the ones that I'm going to be pulling from today and um, I'm just going to kind of deepen up the colors a little bit and uh, then I will, um, if I have a opportunity I may switch and start working on the actual uh, turtles on the page. So that's my uh, plan for today and because I don't really have anything to chat about I thought what I would do is I've got this uh, table topics questions to start great conversations and um, it comes in this cube and I haven't really ever used it but I looked at a couple of the questions and they looked pretty interesting. They look like something that uh, I wouldn't mind uh, answering and I wouldn't mind hearing other people's answers. So I thought I would uh, pick a few uh, cards from this table topics and um, it's the dinner party uh, version. I guess they have some other editions. They've got uh, family, girls night out, um, gourmet, 60s, 70s, 80s, and then uh, some other ones. So that is the plan for today. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then uh, grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and uh, let's color and chat. Okay, so I'm going to select my first question and uh, this is what the cards look like and okay so the first question is what's the most interesting museum you've ever visited uh, let's see I'm not sure that it's actually would be considered a full museum but um, it was one that kind of has was very interesting to me and that was in Las Vegas they had a Titanic uh, exhibit that was there for a number of years and it gave you it had a bunch of artifacts uh, from the Titanic and um, you could go in and walk through basically they recreated cabins and and uh, stuff now I have never seen Titanic the movie or anything like that so um, it was still all quite new and interesting to me so I would say that that's probably the 
most interesting. I can't, uh, because I'm, I'm on oxygen, I can't really um, travel that far. So I haven't been to, you know, London or, or any of those further off places uh, to see many exotic museums. I've, before oxygen, I was, uh, have been to Australia and a few places in the United States. But uh, yeah, I would say that the exhibit or the traveling museum about the Titanic was, uh, and I went and saw that with my girlfriend when we were in Las Vegas for a girls weekend. So yeah. So any of these questions that I do uh, go over and answer, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments and answers in the uh, comments below. And uh, we can all kind of just uh, have a little chat and I'll uh, read all your comments. I always um, respond to comments. Um, so I think that that's a fun way to get to know all of us. Okay. That just kind of deepens up the color. Um, and I like that. I find the Neo Color 2s move a little bit more. And now that the um, ink tents is fully dry, it shouldn't be moving on the page. Okay. Let's go to question number two. And what's the best speech you've ever heard? Hmm. I've heard quite a few speeches in my time. I actually um, have been selling uh, Sensi, which is a uh, fragrance uh, company uh, based out of um, the States. And um, I've actually been selling Sensi for 11 years. So I've gone to a number of their um, conventions, or we call them family reunions. And uh, I've had the opportunity to hear some pretty spectacular speakers um, at the conventions. So I guess that's where I would kind of draw my speech hearing experiences from because I, I heard these people uh, live. And I think there's two. So I'm gonna pick one man, one woman. Um, and they're both obviously like inspirational speeches because those resonate the most to me and I think kind of those are the ones that stick out to people um, at least that's in my experience they those are the ones that I remember the longest um, and so the two people are one the man is John O'Leary and I actually um, bought his book and I have um, follow him on Facebook and he also has a podcast the podcast is live inspired and so is his um, Facebook group and he is an American and he survived um, a childhood fire uh, where he was burned uh, about I believe like 90 percent of his body um, and uh, obviously he has lived uh, to tell uh, you know talk about it and stuff but um, it wasn't so much um, the fire uh, that inspired me, but it, it's his whole attitude towards life. And, um, you know, he he's always kind of signs off saying, you know, your best days are, are yet to come kind of deal. Um, and li live inspired. And yeah, so I, I just, he really resonated with me. And um, I found that I still enjoy following him and sometimes you know you hear someone speak and and you know they were a good speaker and and stuff but you don't kind of follow up and f continue uh, following them you know it was kind of at the moment it was good but then you're done but I still actually like um, to hear and he brings on other people on his podcast and stuff so it's um it's quite good the other person uh, that I saw again through Sensi, um, having her speak, and I now follow her on Instagram, um, is Amy Purdy. So she is a double amputee, and she is an Olympian in the sport 
of snowboarding. And snowboarding, obviously, <laughs> you need both your legs. And um, she actually snowboards on two prosthetics. And uh, she also swims and she's just, it's amazing. And she's a very, a very, very positive person as well. And her story is quite inspiring. So those, I guess, would be my two people that um, speeches I've, I've best I've ever heard. So this is deepening up some of these colors. I like the edges to be a little bit darker and then the center of my picture to be a bit brighter. Um, so that's kind of the vibe I'm going for here. And I am kind of scrubbing the paper a little bit um, with just minimal water. So I'm really testing this paper, which um, probably is not a great idea since I have not treated it. Um, so this is kind of a test for myself too, because um, I normally would treat the paper, but uh, I was feeling a little bit lazy and I just wanted to get started on this page the other day because it is a double page spread so that is going to take quite a bit. So I'm going to leave the edges are a little bit damp now so I don't want to add too much more um, water. Um, so I'm going to skip doing this blue area right here and I am going to come in and just uh, smooth out a little bit around the turtle itself and I'm going to go back to my Neo Colors and I think Jade Green kind of goes the best with that. So that's this color. I really enjoy using crayons. I don't know. Um, and I mean, I don't, you don't even have to activate these. I do have Neocolor 1 as well. And I think that I might try doing a background just in Neocolor 1s at some point. I'm just kind of giving the little turtle a little bit of halo around him. Not sure why, but I just think it would look cool. So I hope everybody is having a good week that they're getting. It's already June. It's quite, quite surprising. I've been doing lots of work in the garden and uh, everything is starting to come up. So that's always exciting. In fact, I've got potatoes coming up. Obviously, I didn't do a very good job of harvesting last year because I did not plant potatoes uh, in the spots where they are currently coming up. Um, so I've got potatoes popping up in my pumpkin patch and my um, <laughs> squash area. So. But I'm just like, oh, that's fine. I'll let them grow and uh, I'll just have extra harvesting to do there. Okay. Let's go and pick another card. Okay. Okay. What's changed most in your lifetime? Oh, there's so many, many changes that have happened um, in my lifetime. I am 57 years old. Um, but I think what comes to mind the, the quickest um, is the telephone. Um, when, when I grew up, we, um, so, I had friends that still lived on a farm, so they had like a party line phone where basically you pick the phone up and if there was somebody already on the phone, so you would have a party line would be, 
you're you're in a rural area and there's only so many phone lines in the area so you could have like three or four families sharing one phone line um, so you would pick your phone up and there would already be somebody talking on the phone and it wasn't f anybody in your household so it could be a neighbor down the road um, so that was always kind of interesting to me uh, the whole party line phone and then whilst I was growing up we had I'm now pulling out turquoise um, we had a wall phone so I mean phones used to be actually connected to the wall um, so I mean you never lost your phone that way which was a plus um, but yeah we uh, and we had one phone for eight people who lived in the house one phone people imagine that uh, and then now of course everybody has a smartphone or a, a phone that basically is also a mini computer so I just I, I can't imagine even my first cell phone was like a huge brick that flipped like you know was a flip phone and uh, the battery was this thick you know in uh, so even if you are just somebody that's always had a cell phone the evolution of the cell phones is just uh, has been incredible so yeah I think that um, that is what has changed the most in my lifetime I mean obviously we've had computers and everything else but I think that you know the the changes in the way we communicate and uh, our cell phones and all of that has been the biggest change. Just uh, blending in now um, this area. So I'm going to work a little bit more on the background. And then I'm going to, uh, like I mentioned, start on the actual turtle. And I think that I might pull out some uh, polychromos for the turtle area. I also have pit artist pens um, and those work really well if you have treated the paper already because they are water soluble ink as well. Um, they're an India ink so they don't soak through the paper typically. Um, if you do a bunch of um, layers they certainly can but uh, Oh, and my dog Annie is uh, snoring, so uh, hopefully that's not too distracting. Okay, I'll work a little bit more on this, and then I'll pull out another card, and we'll um, we'll do another question. I'm just going to go ahead and activate this whole area, this whole area. And because I had fully activated the ink tents um, previously, they are not moving and activating again. So I'm just activating and mixing the Neo Color 2s on top of uh, what is already there. So that's how it's looking. And I'll uh, zoom out later to show you um, kind of this completed side versus uh, just leaving it with ink tents on the other side because I haven't um, changed the other side. Okay, I'll just finish reactivating this and I'll be right back with another table topic question.
Okay, I've zoomed out a little bit. I've uh, totally activated this side. So this side has um, at least three layers of pigment on it. So probably one and a half of the Derwent Ink Tents and then a follow-up. So then I let that dry for 24 hours and then I've used some uh, Neo Color 2s on top. And that's on this side of the page only. On this side of the page, we have just the Ink Tents. And so I think that the Neo Color 2s just adds a bit more vibrancy. Um, I could have done another layer of this as well. Um, and I have done uh, the darker layer out along the edge already. But I do like the way this is looking. And I do like um, just having fun with the crayon. So I'm going to do that to this side as well. But I'll do that off camera a little bit later. I am going to go. So to help me pick out the colors, I want to do the and, center uh, while the rest area of the right dry. here. I and I'm using the Color with Claire uh, Polychromos Color Family chart, and I'm going to pick these three colors here. So I'm going to pick light magenta, middle purple pink, and magenta. So that's these colors, and I'm going to do those heart-like picture or center of the turtle while the rest of the page is drying. And I'm going to put a piece of wax paper or it's actually a parchment paper down to uh, so I'm not smudging the drying ink with my hand. So I'm going to do a light overall and I'll bring you back down so uh, I'll zoom you in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to do a light overall pink. And then I'm going to come in with the darkest pink along the bottom. And then the middle pink again from the bottom and then come up. Okay, in the next table topic card, flip it over. If you had to quit your job to chase a dream, what would it be? Whew. Well, um, I have already kind of had to quit my job, or what I've done is move my job, um, and I work from home as much as I can, which is just a few hours a week. Um, due to health reasons. Um, but if I had to quit my job to chase a dream, gee, I don't know. I don't know that I, I mean, I worked as an accountant for oil and gas companies before, and um, I already had to adjust how I worked and uh, so I became a consultant and I uh, worked for many different companies over the years. So that was already kind of adapting my current job to kind of fit how I was able to work. And I, I enjoyed what I did for a living. So um, I didn't have a separate dream per se to pursue. So. I think that one's a hard question, but uh, what? How would you answer in the comments below? You know, do you have a a dream that you're holding back and not pursuing? And if you quit your job, what would that dream be? I guess. Take um, a look how this is. That's kind of what we'll I'm going to leave go that for. one. Um, these little round spots here. I'm going to treat them more like barnacles. I think. So I'm going to actually do them uh, like a turquoise green and because uh, I think green and pink go really well together. Um, so that's what I'm going to do there. So I'll zoom you back out a little bit and I'll keep working on this. 
and uh, I'll be right back with probably one more question. I'll check and see. I'm not sure how long we've been chatting, so. I've decided since I still had the uh, ink tents out that I was going to use teal green. Um, I have the 24 set of ink tents, so not a super huge set. But since I already had it out, I thought I'd use that, then can activate it. Yeah. That's a nice, bright, vibrant green. Are you old school or new school? Hmm. Well, I guess that depends on what we're talking about. So I guess we get to first pick that. And I think it would, I'm a fairly uh, straightforward, no nonsense kind of person. Um, so I guess it would depend on uh, the situation and the topic. So I'll uh, I'll pick a topic, I guess, first, and then make a decision on old school or new school. Okay, so the question was, are you old school or new school? And I'm gonna, I guess, um, pick the topic of working, um, since we were talking about uh, working earlier, and all the changes that have occurred in the workforce in the, even the last three years due to uh, the pandemic and people learning to work remotely and work from home, I had already, our company had already closed their offices in um, 2016, uh, 2017, so I had already been working remotely from home and I was always quite worried or didn't really understand how that whole working from home was going to work. I work with paper, I work with um, people and files and uh, I have learned, you know, now we keep everything scanned. So I have a scanner at the house and we, I scan all my work, I work online um, and it ended up being totally doable um, but when I first started I was like it was a very hard concept to think okay well how can I still be meeting people how can we keep in touch and communicate and uh, the advances in the whole uh, remote access and uh, the ability to you know keep things on the cloud and share files and um, get remote support even from your help desk uh, really has changed a lot and it's allowed people to work um, like myself who um, really can't work outside the home uh, um, ways and means to continue to work um, even if it's just different or a, a less you know but I have been able to work a little bit from home and uh, it has been quite interesting to see the views of people um, changing from, oh, you could never work remotely to absolutely this is possible. So I think that um, while I do still think that there is a place for a physical office and meeting people and, and seeing people in person, um, I do think that um, the pandemic has shown us that we can also adapt and uh, change the way we typically would have thought an office needs to run um, and how we were all paper, you know, I'm an accountant, so we're a paper-based business, how even that can change. And, you know, we can scan things, we can uh, view things online, we can invoice online. It's um, a lot has changed in the last, you know, 10, 15 years, but 
I think even more has changed in the last three years um, due to the pandemic. So I guess I am, I understand old school because as an accountant, I'm very much an old school kind of person, but I can really appreciate new school and uh, changes and advancements and understanding that we need to keep learning and uh, growth isn't a bad thing and change isn't a bad thing. Change is hard. Change can be painful, uh, growing pains and such, but uh, it can be worth it. I don't think we need to throw everything out uh, that we learned before or we, you know, I don't think everything has to change. So I don't think everything new school is, is the best, but I think that, um, yeah, in a world that is changing, that's the only thing that's constant is change. So it's kind of nice to be creative because really we're still back to, to coloring okay, like we did as kids. Question. So, uh, that's which author have you read the most? Well, I am quite an avid reader. Um, and uh, so I actually keep track of how many books I read and, and the authors that I read um, using an app called Book Buddy. So I consulted my app and made a short list of four authors that I have read uh, quite a bit of. So I'll share those four and then this will be the last question for today. So the four people in alphabetical order, because that's how my book buddy works, is uh, Susan Brockman. So I have read 32 of her books. And so she does uh, like suspense type books, a little bit of romance thrown in there, but they're all about really SEAL Team 6 kind of books. So uh, yeah, so those those books. And they're kind of in a series, so you can read them standalone, but um, they do tend to have reoccurring people in the stories. So um, that's kind of nice. I like that kind of continuity. Let's grab a lighter color here. Yeah. I'm just testing out some colors. Okay. So the next person on my list is Robin Carr. And Robin Carr is the author behind uh, the Virgin River series on Netflix. So you may be familiar with her work. And I have read 45 of her books. So besides the um, Virgin River type series books, she does have a few other series and they kind of most of them base around a small town where you get to know the characters and you follow them um, through their journeys and struggles and stuff. So there's that. So that's Robin Carr and it's Carr spelled C-A-R-R. -R. So if you're looking up to find a good read. And the next person, so I've read 45 of her books. So quite a few. It's amazing that uh, somebody could actually write that many books. So that's kind of interesting. I think I'm going to take a break from the green and go back to the pink. Uh, the, the other person is Janet Ivanovich, and I have uh, read 33 of her books. Now, Janet Ivanovich, Ivanovich is the person behind the Stephanie Plum uh, bounty, uh, bounty Hunter series. So, and it's, she uses the same characters in all her books. Uh, so you get to know the characters. I actually listen to those on audiobook more than read them. So um, I listen to audiobooks and uh, she's very funny. 
the situations that Stephanie Plum gets into are quite hilarious. And uh, yeah, so that one is definitely not a romance one. It's kind of, I mean, there's a little bit of romance in a couple of the characters, but it's mainly uh, comedy, lighthearted. And the winner is the one that I've read the most of. I've read 51 of her books uh, since I've started keeping track anyways, 51. And that is Stephanie Lawrence. And Stephanie Lawrence writes historical romance novels from like uh, the 1718, early 1900s, mostly the 1800s. Um, and she follows a family that is one of her, her largest series is a, a family called the Sinsters. And so there's many books on that. And again, you get to know the characters and you kind of follow them. And that one is a romance, a little bit of his, like it's a historical romance. So, but uh, yeah, 51 books. I couldn't believe it actually when I looked it up. So, so I'd love to hear who you may be, um, your most read author. And uh, if you've read any of the authors that I mentioned, the Susan Brockman, Robin Carr, Jana Devonovich, or Stephanie Lawrence. So as you can tell, I kind of read a bunch of different genres. I don't read any true crime type books. I don't, I don't, I'm not into that. Um, but I do enjoy some lighthearted books and also a nice romance. I don't really have, um, a lot of TV here, so I do more reading and listening to book tapes. While I color, I do audio books. So yeah. And I think we'll leave it there. I think that this is coming along. Um, I do like the Ink Tense uh, turquoise. That uh, is very bright and stuff. I'm not sure I like these colors that I'm doing right there, so I'm uh, gonna try a couple of other things. I might, I had selected these two. I might switch to do these ones instead. So um, I may lighten that up with a, an eraser and then uh, re-go over it. But that's where I'm gonna leave you off today. Uh, thank you very much for joining me on my first color and chat. Let me know in the comments below if you like this type of video if you find it interesting. Um, if you'd like to answer the questions that uh, I have answered in the video, feel free to drop a comment below. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, and creative week. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.